Today I'm going to show you a feature that's more powerful than any sensor. It's also more powerful than any script that you can create and it's even more powerful than templating. By the end of this video you will learn how to make services in Home Assistant thanks to Python. Specifically we're going to create a Python script to fade light. Talking about Python, this video has been made possible thanks to my friends at Datacam. It is time to take control of our data and take control of our smart homes and what best way of doing that with learning how to use Python. Datacamp is an online platform that makes it super easy and convenient to acquire new data skills. Trust me, I've been a data engineer for over 10 years and the platform is just awesome. If you're a Home Assistant user, I would actually go for the Python fundamental track where you can learn a lot about Python and then you can apply that logic to this video and you can actually create your own Python scripts within Home Assistant. You can get access to any chapter in Datacamp for free by following the link in the description down below. First thing you need to do is to get a piece of software to run Python code locally on our computer. I'm using PyCharm, but you can use anything you want. This is gonna be super simple to follow. Don't worry if you've never coded in your life, we can get this done together. Now with coding, the first thing to do is write some pseudocode. Start writing out things that you want the code to do. My Python function is gonna have two inputs. The entity ID, so that's going to be the light that I want to uh, fade. The time that I want the fading to occur in. We need to find the current brightness level of the device and calculate how much time it will take to dim it. We can add also extra logic to say if the brightness is zero or it's null, so that means that it's non-available. And the main concept is this while statement. A while is also a loop in programming, which is basically a sequence of actions happening a number of times depending on the condition. So while basically says, while this condition is true, then keep on executing this piece of code. While the brightness is greater than zero, then we are going to be reducing the brightness by one increment each time. So to give you an example, so if the brightness level is at maximum, which is 255, and we want to um, fade it out in 15 minutes, then we can calculate that 15 times 60 is 900 seconds. So every 3.5 seconds, so if we take 900 and divide that by 255, we get 3.5. So all of this is quite good. This is just writing it out. Now let's get going with some code. First thing to do is to define our function. Our function is going to have a name, which is light underscore fading. And we're having two inputs, the sleep underscore time and brightness. Remember to add the colon at the end. Now when we go and press enter, you'll see we've got automatically two spaces here. So now we need to start defining some variables. Variables are going to hold some information and this information might change as the program actually gets executed. So I'm going to have current brightness. This is going to capture the brightness of the device. So that's our starting point. We can assume that's 255, but it might not be. So what we don't want to do is to put a light at 255 when it's 100 and we're trying to fade it. Key one you need to add is the sleeping time based in seconds. So what I'm doing is I'm converting this uh, input over here, which is expressed in minutes, and I'm just timing it by uh, 60. So I get the correct number of seconds. And the sleep delay is basically dividing the sleep time in seconds divided by the current brightness. Now let's start running some functionality. Type in while and look at the desired brightness and the current brightness. So let's recap. So the desired brightness, we need to put it down as zero, which I've got over here. And the current brightness is what the current brightness is of the actual light. Remember you need a colon every time. And every time we add the colon in Python, that means that we need to indent a little bit like YAML. This next line of code over here, the current brightness equals the current brightness, which is itself minus one. What this is doing is basically in our first tab, allowing us to immediately start fading the light. Now I'm adding this print. So print brackets and current brightness. It's gonna enable us to actually see results down at the bottom over here. You don't need a sprint when we're gonna be putting this into Home Assistant. Okay, so our function is done. The way to actually execute our function is to ensure that we are set right close to the left-hand side. So we should be in line with our definition. And you can actually see, you can actually collapse it now, underscore fading. And in here we can set two things. We need to set the sleep time, express in minutes, which I'm gonna put as one, 
and we're going to set our brightness. So we're going to set the brightness to 100. So this is the starting brightness. So you should have this green button over here. And if you click it, you can see that we've immediately printed out, which is what we need to fade the lights. But you saw that was quite fast. That wasn't one minute, right? That was instant and I didn't speed it up in the video edit. So we're missing one thing. We need to slow down the program. To do that, we could use something called the time sleep delay. Time.sleep is a standard library in Python that we can import. And you don't need to worry about that, but basically the basic idea is, is that we're gonna pick the value from the sleep delay which is uh, coming from here, which is our calculator. So that's 3.5 uh, seconds. And we have it over here. Now you can see time is giving us an error message and we actually need to import it. So right before your definition, um, we got to import it. And it is as simple as just typing import time. There you go. So save your program and give it another run. And now we can see that it is, and it actually will take one minute precisely. To actually test it, it does take one minute. Let's add in a few print statements with some timestamps. So I'm gonna halt the program. So I'm gonna to go to the red button. I've halted the program, I'm gonna get an error messages, ignore it. You can also clear with this uh, button over here, the trash button. So we sort of start with a blank canvas. So I've just added in some of the code before our current brightness where we were starting previously. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a function called daytime to find out the now. I'm currently formatting the time to a specific format, these hours, uh, minutes, and seconds. And I'm printing, this is some text, so the current time is, and this is the actual current time. And this is this variable, and you can see, you can see I'm highlighting it over here. One more thing we need to do, we need to import the uh, time functionality, which you can just use with from daytime, import daytime, so we'll be printing basically before we go into our loop. So before we actually do any delay at all, we'll be printing a current time. And what we want to do is basically at the end of the process, so after that we've finished our uh, fading out, we just want to print out the result. To do that, and I know it's not that efficient because we're actually repeating code, which is, isn't great, but just to keep it simple for this video, uh, I'm repeating these steps between uh, now, current, and print. And I'm doing it over here again, so we gotta get a another time set. So let me just run this for you. Let me show you. So if I just run it, you can see the current time is 2204 48, and it will be going down and it will actually terminate precisely after a minute. Time was 220448. If we go down, we can see the time is 220548. Well done, we have a function in Python script. One thing I need to clarify is this 900 was for 15 minutes. So obviously for one minute, this would have been 60. Now the cool thing is that you can actually change it. So let's say we said 10 minutes is our sort of time and we're gonna run it and we can see the immediate effect of this. So you can see we're 99 and it's taking a lot longer for this to actually start fading and go 98. So you might be asking yourself, how do we actually move this piece of code into Home Assistant here, I'm not actually doing any dimming per se. Save your code, let's jump into Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, you need to go to your configurations.yaml first, add what we have got here at line nine, put it wherever you want, python underscore script, colon, save this. Now, once you create a folder called python underscore scripts, create a folder, you've got this plus button over here if you're using the file editor, new folder, give it a name, press okay. In that folder itself, you're gonna be creating a few things. You can create a hello world if you want to, and you can create n number of Python scripts. The one that I've created is light underscore fading. Remember that this name is quite important because you're gonna be using this name in your services call. Services.yaml is a supplemental file we're gonna to need to create to actually help Home Assistant know and understand what this actually is doing. It also is gonna be really useful for documentation. So you're gonna notice a couple of things. First, you don't need that definition. So you can take that out. You don't even need the imports because sort of Home Assistant has done that for you. The only thing you need to do is to indent everything to the um, left hand side, apart from things that you have under the while, right? Which, which means that basically this is indented. So everything that's on the right hand side is gonna be executed inside the while 
everything that's outside will be executed outside of the loop. You're going to need this line of code over here, states equals has dot states dot get entity underscore ID. This is going to enable you to actually get the current uh, status, some information from the entity ID. The first two lines, we're going to need them to get the variables. So these are what we're going to be basically passing into the function. You remember we have the uh, sleep time, but we also going to need the entity time, entity ID. So sleep time is going to be expressed in minutes, like our example before. But obviously we have the entity ID, which is something quite new. The reason why we don't really need the brightness in this example is that I'm actually getting the current brightness level from the attribute itself. So we are never going to be uh, sending the brightness level higher than what it currently is. So we can do that fading nicely. I'm declaring my brightness, desired brightness as usual. We have our calculation for the sleep time, like I explained earlier. The logic of the while is pretty much straightforward. So we're waiting for this statement to be false. So the moment that the desired brightness is either equal to the current brightness or it's greater than, then this will stop working. Basically, because we set the desired brightness to zero, then as soon as the current brightness is zero, then this while statement will stop. And then we'll go into the last piece of the code, which we're going to be logging information. At line 15, we're building the information that we need for the data. So when you're using services in a home system, you always need the entity ID. And most of the time, you also need some data, some supplementary information that we need to give the service. In this example, in the data, we are giving obviously our entity ID, but we're also giving the brightness. So these are fixed values and these entity IDs over here, this represents the variable that I'm actually using in my function. Let's take an example. The light is at 255. First run is going to go 255 equals 255 minus one, which is 254. So this will be set at 254. Okay. Then at line 16, we are using something standard called has.service.call and we're going to be using a light, turn on, and then data. Then we're going to do our sleep delay, which is going to slow it down. So you can allow it to do the fading and then it's going to continue. So we're going to go up again. So the second time round, we're going to say, well, is zero less than 254? Yes, and, and we'll continue until we get to the point that the light is off and this will evaluate as false. So zero is not less than zero. And then we'll go into the logger.info, which is in here. What we're really doing is just we're writing to uh, the logs in home system and we're just saying the brightness of an str means string. So we're converting entity ID in, in string plus and plus is a concatenation. So we're using that to concatenate a uh, text, which is the brightness of. This is a, um, like I said, a variable a text again, and then the current brightness, which will be zero. Once you've done this, save this and you, you restart home assistant. But if you want to wait one more second, I'm going to show you services.yaml, which is a crucial part of this video. At this point, guys, I really appreciate if you smash that like button and share out this video. If you found value out of it, it will help me a lot. Services.yaml in here, we could add supplementary information. First thing you need to do is to give it the name and the name needs to be exactly the same name as what we had previously. Name is a more of a, a UI name, it's a descriptive name. I've just put fade lights. Description is gonna give us a little bit more information and here free, put free uh, any text you wanna put in. These are the fields, entity ID and sleep time that we absolutely need. Description, the light will be faded. That's the description of the actual entity ID. And this is a, a possible example, sleep time, description, and example. So save services.yaml and let's go to the developer tools and actually give you a demo. So you should be able to find now, once you restarted Home Assistant, under Python underscore scripts, all of your Python scripts that you've been creating. So if you've been creating the light underscore fading like I have, you'll find it here. So you can find that the code is sort of very similar to any other services that, that you've actually ever used. Entity ID, I'm gonna, I'm always picking the lamp that's in this room. Sleep time equals one. And uh, you can see at the bottom here, all the available parameters. And this is exactly what we did in the service that YAML is actually coming through at the bottom over here. And you can actually use the full example data. So this is really, really awesome 
where you can actually uh, get a lot of uh, information out of it and make it really look like if it was any other service. One thing to point out while we're here is that you can reload the scripts with this Python reload. Now I'd really recommend that any major change you make to the code unless you're quite comfortable with Python, you try to make it on your uh, IDE, so on your local program, run it, and then once you're happy with it, sort of put it into Home Assistant. One thing you think you could do is you could change the default brightness level. So the desired brightness might not be zero, it might, it might be five or 10 or 15. So you can add that to this script. Actually, if you want a little bit of homework and you want to take on this challenge, let me know in the comment section down below, how you, could you improve this Python script? I'm looking forward to seeing them and I'll comment uh, and reply below. Okay, we're ready now to dim the lights. Let's give this a go. So we've got our light, light.imac lamp. We've got our sleep time, which is one minute. I've put it on and the current brightness level is 255. So I'm going to call service and you can see it dropping down. And it's not dropping down one a second, remember, because it has to get down from 255, fade it right down in one minute. This is just one example of what you can create with Python. It is super easy to pick up and I really recommend you actually do it and get into it. It will really take your home assistant experience to another level, but also, you know, Python, you can use it in so many applications. It's really a must have. To get actually more ideas and more scripts that you can actually try out, then I recommend you click this video over here, where I give five scripts, and you can apply that in home assistant through scripts, or if you want to, you could apply the same logic to Python.